It's always so great to talk about your projects. I think uh, this is quite interesting because when it comes to real life uh, uh, characters, you can add a little bit of yourself and a little bit of what you know. So what is the ratio? Um, I don't know. I mean, I always kind of approach every part. Uh, well, I don't know if it makes a difference if it's a real life person or not, but I mean, I kind of approach every part as a sort of aspirational mm -hmm. thing. I mean, I... I'll read, I'll read a script and think. Oh, I, there's always something in me which thinks um, I kind of want to be that character or like have it, have it as a part of me. And so I guess that's how it sort of assimilates into my own character. I think. When I think of photography, I think of passionate people. Is it the right impression when it comes to Dennis? And uh, how do you feel about photography? Um, I mean, I've never been that into photography, but. Uh, I, I understood where, I mean, I think Dennis Stock, I mean, how I was playing anyway, was someone who wanted to be an artist more than mm -hmm. a photographer, and he just ended up being, his, his talent was photography, and so, but I think there's a strange thing, the, the weird part of it, which I found interesting about photography in general, mm -hmm. and trying, to, you know, that being your art form, is that you're constantly sort of passive, like you have, especially with his kind of photography, where you're mm -hmm. quite reliant on the subject and having... You know, especially when you're taking pictures of interesting, famous people. Um, and I can imagine that to be quite frustrating. You know, you, ha you have to rely on a great subject and you can't just generate it. And I think that's what Dennis had a big problem with as well. If I think of the films that you've chosen in the last few years, it's always been a director's medium. So that's very important for you, right? A director with a clear vision, somebody you can learn from, be excited about. Yeah, and it's kind of... It's just much easier to have confidence in someone when they're when they're very confident in themselves, um, and also when you have quite prominent directors, that it's just e they're definitely in control of the project. Um, when you're working with I don't know a new director or something or, or someone who's I don't know who just isn't trusted, isn't fully trusted by the people who are financing the movie yet, sometimes. It, you know, the ship starts kind of sailing in random directions. Yes. Uh, who are your favourites uh, to win the Oscar uh, this year and do you support Julianne Moore, your fellow actress? <laughs> oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, no, Julianne's amazing. Um, I love Wild Tales. Yeah, it's a great film. That's like my favourite movie. That, I was incredibly surprised that Force Majeure wasn't nominated, but <laughs> I, I'm nominating that. <laughs> um, but Wild Tales, I think, is like one of my favorite movies of the year. Yeah, well, all the, you know, the foreign film categories are so competitive because the movies are so great. So it's, it's a shame there's only five mm -hmm. that can be nominated. Um, obviously, we're talking about screen icons. Uh, who were yours growing up? Uh, you know, do you believe in that age of, you know, legendary Hollywood movie stars a la James Dean? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I definitely had it. I mean, I was more of a Brando person than a Dean person. Um, that's where I, got, I always went into kind of arguments with Dane about this because uh, he thinks they're kind of along the same lines and I yeah. think they're fundamentally different. And they had a rivalry as well when it came to sentimental yeah. life. I mean, James Dean was just trying to be Brando. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> but, like, um, but, um,. How do I? What was that? How do I feel? Yeah, you know, do 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 you do you like that golden age of Hollywood? You know, that time where things were just yeah, I mean, it's much a, more poetic. I think yeah. I mean, also, it, it just seemed it was an era where it's it seems it was so important to people, and it's always it's always an amazing period in history when art um, is you know people are actually looking at art to tell them how to live and stuff, um, you know, because. I think now how you know why we're in quite a strange age now is because no one's actually looking at art and they're just looking at the kind of commercial enterprises where people are telling them how to live specifically so they'll buy stuff <laughs> like whereas you know you look back in the day you look at someone like James Dean who would um, you know actually tell people you know his his whole his whole um, existence was about finding his own voice and people wanted to find their own voice through him so that makes sense. <laughs>